All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I'm coming at you right now with Chapter 3 from our textbook, Microsoft Visual C Sharp 2017, an Introduction to Object-Oriented Programming by Joyce Farrell for the AWD 1100 uh, Programming Fundamentals with C Sharp class for the Spring 2018 semester. <coughs> so far, I gave you a brief introduction and went over Chapter 1, which was just kind of a generic chapter, and chapter two where we talked about data types. In this chapter, as it says, we're going to use graphical user interface objects and the Visual Studio IDE. So the previous chapter was basically doing things from the command line, and now we're talking about not. So we want to be able to create a form in the Visual Studio IDE, or Integrated Development Environment, use the toolbox to add a button to a form, Use labels and text boxes, you name forms and controls, correct errors, decide which interface to use. Now before we go, let me just tell you, before we get started, I'm going to bring up Visual Studio. I'm at the end of the fall 2017 semester, so I'm still using Visual Studio 2015. All right, I haven't even downloaded 2017 yet, so it may end up looking a little different than what we're doing right now. The way that you do things should essentially be the same. All right, so let's get going. The interface is the environment the user sees. I already mentioned this to you the other day where I said the interface is what you show the user, the implementation is what you hide from the user. It's encapsulated from the user. All right, we will be using forms for most of the semester as graphical user interface objects that provide a means for us to work with information. All right, forms aren't really any good or of any use. A form by itself doesn't do anything. A form typically has to have some kind of controls associated with it. So to create a form, we select a new project, we choose Windows Forms app, all right, and then we see the IDE, which will look like this. Before we even do that, let's just go through the process in here. So. I'm going to do a file, new, project. You always want to make sure when you do this, depending on how you have <clears throat> how you have installed the software, that you are in the C sharp folder. You want to be make sure that you're choosing a C sharp project. And I am. Alright. Notice I'm in visual. C sharp. Well, I've been working on web stuff for a different class, so I'm going to move back up to Windows. And we want, I believe, a Windows form application. I want to double check. Windows Forms app. Okay. So I'm just going to create one on my desktop here, and I'm going to call this uh, C sharp demo. That's it. All right. And I'll also check this, create a directory for my solution. All right. If I wanted to work with Git so I'd be able to get different versions of this file, I could check this as well. I'm not going to do that right now. But with Windows Forms app, so I'm under Visuals, C Sharp, Windows, Windows Forms application with a create directory for a solution. So what I want to show you quickly is before I do this, if I go and look on my desktop, all right, a little ugly, but you'll notice that if I'm looking on this here, I don't, I do not have, do a, do a view here. I do not have a folder right now called C Sharp Demo. You can see they're in alphabetic order. All right, but now once I come into here and I click OK, it says project, oh, it doesn't like the sharp. Okay, it doesn't like the, the pound symbol, so I'll have to type in C sharp demo. <clears throat> and here it goes. It's going to go in, in my solution explorer, which is over here. It's going to start making some files for me. There they are. Here's my form. It's very small, so I'll make it bigger. This over here, we're not going to use that. We're going to view our what's called our toolbox. So I'm going to click view and choose toolbox. All right, this will make a lot of more sense as we start getting through this, okay? All right, so 
as mentioned in our slides. Okay, we went and did all this stuff. And then I came in here and I chose Visual C Sharp. Okay, and I could have chosen Windows Forms app right from there, but I went inside and I choose Windows in Windows Forms app. It doesn't matter. It gave me this. So, as I mentioned, I just showed you how to bring up the toolbox. So let's look at each one of these components in order here. So here's my toolbox. If I don't want it, I can click the X there and make it go away. There's always gonna, I, you know, I can make all of it go away. If I wanna bring it back, I can click View and choose Toolbox or do a Control plus W plus X or I can click that particular icon if I've got it available. There's also a thing here right in the middle that says Auto Hide and it's called a pin. All right. Notice it's automatically hiding it unless I want to bring it back. If I want that toolbox to stay there, I can click the pin again, and that will pin it. Okay. To the desktop. Why is it showing that? No. There it is. All right, now when I pin this, now it's going to stay there. Okay? All right. You'll notice there's a bunch of different things here as far as the settings. The ones we're going to con we're going to stick with mostly are going to be these common window controls. We're going to do very little to nothing with containers. Now yeah, we'll do a little bit, but not much. We'll get to menus towards the end. Data is for databases. Our book really doesn't go over it very much. Components, I don't think we're going to touch. Printing, we're not going to touch. Dialogues, we're not going to touch. Well, we'll look at dialogues a little bit. WPF, uh, Windows something foundation, I don't remember. We're not going to touch that. In general, it's got nothing under it. So we're going to be concerned almost exclusively with the all Windows forms right there. All right, so that's the first thing to realize. Error list down in the bottom. Well, when we go and start working on this stuff, down here on the bottom, it'll show us an error list. So right now, I can actually run this, and I'm going to. It's not going to do anything because there's nothing in here whatsoever. But it is going to run it. It should just show me somewhere over here something that looks just like this, like my form. There it is. Okay, you see it's not there. Yes, it is there. There it's not running, there it's running. See that? It's got the white bar around the top. There it is. That's the running run of my program. Now, had I run it and had there been errors in the program, I would have seen them down here in my error output area. All right, I don't need to be running this anymore, so I'm gonna stop the run. All right, we've got our menu bar, our solution explorer. Our menu bar is up here. If I wanna add things, I can right mouse click over here and I can choose to add different things. We'll talk about that at a different time. I might wanna add debug, which added a bunch more stuff in here. All right, or I can remove it if I don't want it by just clicking on it again. All right, this area in here is called my Solution Explorer. It shows me all of the different files that I have that are associated with this particular project. This area down here, and I can stretch both of these and make them bigger, smaller, etc. This area that's down here, come on. This is called my Properties window. So if I come over here and grab a button and just throw a button on my form here, all right, now I see all the properties for a button. So if I want to, as an example, I can come over here and click on the button and make it bigger, nice and big. Then if I want to, and this I wouldn't normally do this, but I could change the background color of my button. Usually we keep them gray, but we don't have to. So I could make it kind of a green, all right. And if I wanted to, I could change the foreground color of the button, which is the color of the text. So if I wanted to, I could make that red. 
as an example, and it's hard to tell. Let's see if I grab another color and maybe grab something else to make it stand out more. There's yellow. You can't even see it. And let's do this. Let's come over here. And let's make this one yellow. All right. And then let's come over here and make this one green. That might make, make it stand out a little bit more. There we go. All right. I can change the size of the font that's in here. Right now, it's about 8 point. But if I wanted to, I could make it 18 point. And I could bold it and change it to a different font style. All right. MS Outlook and click OK. And you can see that, how it looks then. That font is really unintelligible. So, <clears throat> grab something like Ariel. And now you can see it says button one. I can play with bolding and all sorts of stuff if I want to do so. That's just very quickly just to show you that. <clears throat> all right. Project name, form designer, and properties window. Well, I showed you the properties window already. The project name is right here. It's not, this is the solution name. This is the project name. They are the same thing, but they don't have to be. So this, underneath the solution, is the project name. If I wanted to change that, I could click on it, right mouse click, and choose rename. I don't want to. All right. This area here where I draw things, this is my form designer. Again, I can take this button. I can play with the size on it. You know, I can make it, make it smaller, bigger. I can move it around on the screen, etc. We're going to learn how to do all these things in here. All right. So, let's continue on. So the name of the project shows in three places, the title bar at the top of the screen, in the Solution Explorer, and in the Properties window. The menu bar is along the top of the screen. The toolbox, I showed you all this stuff. The form designer appears in the center of the screen. The Solution Explorer shows you your files. The Properties window shows you the properties and events for the current control. And the error list has errors for your control, for your code rather. When you create a Windows form project, Visual C Sharp automatically adds that form for us and it calls that form form one. You may or may not have noticed that. I didn't mention it. So if I click on here, form one, it's showing me that's the name. Notice up here it says form one two. Right here where it says name, that's the name of my form. So I'm going to call this form. C sharp demo and you'll notice it changes here C sharp demo but it doesn't change up here because that's not the name of the form that's the text so if I go down to the text property here there it says form one still I'll say this is an example of a C sharp form and I hit enter and there it is. This is an example of a C-sharp form. So that's the text. All right, that shows you a very important distinction. The name of a property, uh, the name of a control, and the form is another kind of control. The name of a control is how you use it in code. The text on it is what it physically shows. It's the interface. It's what you show to the user. All right. So here's some of the files that are in there. This is my designer. I already showed you the title up there. Here are different things that you can use to sh in your properties window. Here are some of the different files that are in your <clears throat> Solution Explorer. You'll learn these better by having us go through them. All right. In the properties window, you can change the appearance, size, and color of the window. Notice, for example, the form class has around 100 different properties. All right. By default, these properties will be in alphabetic order, except that the name property will appear up at the top. All right. That's not in alphabetic order. Everything else is. <clears throat> says, do not confuse the form's name with its text. I just showed you that. So I'm not going to go over that again. I also showed you how to play with the toolbox tab and even how to pin it. All right. So there's different 
la layers in here and different levels, different ways. Again, almost exclusively, I showed you this push pin. <clears throat> almost exclusively, we're going to be using the common controls. All right. You can drag controls onto a form. I already showed you that. So, for instance, if I want another button on my form, I can do this two ways. I can actually do it three ways. I can double click on the button control, and that puts it typically up at the top of the screen, and it's a certain size, and then I can drag it around, etc. I can go where button is and drag it out. I can do that. Or I can grab my, a current button, do a control C, click, and do a control V, and paste it in. All right. Well, that's three different ways that you can do that. Now, it says once you've dragged the control onto a form, you've given it, it's given a default name, but you really should change that. So, for instance, let's, let's suppose I'm going to have two buttons in my particular application that I'm showing you here. And this button is going to be calculate. And this button is, in fact, let's make three of them. I don't know if this is going to be wide enough for three of these, but... Perfect. So I'm going to have three buttons here. This one's going to be calculate, this one's going to be clear, and this one's going to be exit. So I'm going to go up to this one and where I've got its name, I'm going to change its name from button one to button calculate. Calculate. I'm going to change the name of this one to button clear. <clears throat> you can't, cannot have blank spaces in these names. I'm going to change the name of this one to button exit. Now you notice they don't do anything right now and they also have really bad text on them. So I'm going to go to this first one that we named button calculate and I'm going to change its text to calculate. Calculate. And you can see it changes. All right. I'm going to change this one to clear and I'm finally going to change this one to exit. Right? And when you double click on a button, so really always when you create your controls, buttons, or whatever they are, bring them out, immediately change their name. Don't double click on the button and then change its name. When you double click, it opens up a code window for the button. All right. Oh, how do we do this? Uh, I'm going to type in here for this exit application dot exit. All right. What did that do? It's easier to show you. So I'm going to run the program. And notice it's the program's running. There it is. Now if I click the exit button, the program stops running. Okay. I just very quickly want to show you, I'm, I'm building a, just a, an unbelievably simplistic little program here when we're doing this. <clears throat> So I want to go back and click on my designer again. And let's throw some stuff on here. So I'm going to throw three labels. Label. And I've got to come up here, and there's a thing called auto ellipsis that I want to set to true. Because when I do that, I'm going to, sorry, it's auto size, not auto ellipsis. And I want to set auto size to true. Once I do that, I should be able to come in here with auto size. Why is it not letting me? Well, let's, let's change, we're going to put in here, number one. Number one. Okay, so there's that. And I'm going to copy it and paste it twice. Whoops, I don't want to do that. All right, so I'm going to click on my button here, copy it, and paste it twice. All right. And if you say, what are you doing? Just... Bear with me for a second, okay? Please. So this one we're going to call label number one. This one will be called label number two. And this one here will be called label, no, not label number three, label answer. All right? Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to find a, a control that's called a text box. And I'm going to put three of these out here. There's one. Make it a little bigger. I'm going to make three of those as well. All right.
right, I'm going to call this one text box number one. I'm going to call this one text box number two. And I'm going to call this one text box answer. All right. Now I'm going to make a little magic happen. Okay. I'm going to go to my calculate here. And I'm going to put in here, don't worry about what it means right now because we're going to go over all this. Int num1, sorry, num1 equals text box number one dot text. All right. And I'm going to try to. <clears throat> I'm going to tell the, tell the system that whatever I'm putting in there, <clears throat> I want to convert it to a number, or at least attempt to convert it to a number. All right, so there's my num1, there's my num2. Okay, again, we'll come back and we'll look at this code in just a moment, but before we do, you go back to my program again. All right, and I'm going to say here, I've actually written a complete program for you with about eight or nine lines of code. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to run the program. Now it's going to be hard to see because I should have made this bigger. All right, bud. 34, 23, click calculate, and there's 57, the result. When I click clear, everything clears, and there's my cursor. When I click exit, the program ends. Now, the program's done. I can sit there and play with this now if I want to. In other words, I can play with different things to change the size of this, change the width of this, etc. I don't want to do that. All right, this was just meant to show you that each of these buttons had code in them that made something for the program happen. You notice when I'm doing this, how this lines up? See that? So I can make this stuff line up, and then once I'm happy with it, if I'm happy with it, I can hold down on my left mouse button this is called lassoing, draw an invisible box around everything. Notice it's all highlighted now. Right mouse click, oops, try it again. I gotta do it with all of them highlighted. Right mouse click and choose lock controls. Now I can't move these. Now they're stuck in that area. Okay? So I'm very quickly just showing you some stuff. If you feel very overwhelmed, don't worry about it because we're going to do this as a class. So I showed you a little bit of this stuff here. All right, I put a button onto it. Adding a functionality with a button is easy. I showed you that. I showed you some of the things that were in there. Switching back and forth between views, I showed you code view, and I showed you the view where we were actually looking at it, the form itself. All right, it says you will see many generated statements. For now, you can ignore most of them. The code that we wrote was the name of our button underscore click, which meant when you click the button, all right, when you click that button, what it's saying is, hey, whatever code we have under there, attempt to execute it, all right? Now, when we wrote the program, the C-sharp program that wasn't graphical, the one that we wrote, which was console, there was a static void main in there. There's a static void main here, too, but it's created for you automatically, and you don't have to worry about it. All right? Okay. They get into here talking about some of the differences, and it's not that important right now, and I don't want to confuse you. Just let me tell you that 
C sharp is what's referred to as is one of many event driven languages. With an event driven language, the program is sitting there running, waiting for you to do something. When you do something like click a button, then a button event, button click event is raised and it tries to answer it. So if you put code there, it tries to answer it by running that code. You can write anything you want between the curly braces of a click event. You can declare variables. You saw I did that. You can perform arithmetic statements. You saw I did that. You can produce output. You saw I did that. You can write comments. All right, so what are those? Well, I can come in here and put a comment in here that says slash slash, and it says this routine clears all text boxes and puts the cursor by the text box number one. Okay? This one's got a little more, so let's do, rather than single line comments, which are slash slash, let's do a block comment, which is slash star, and it ends with a star slash. All right, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, um, be consistent those right here. I could put it at the beginning or at the end. It really doesn't matter. This routine, number one, attempts to convert text box number one to a number. It's the first thing it does. Next, it attempts to convert text box number two to a number. Next, it attempts to add text box number one to text box number two. Finally, number four, it oops, attempts to put the answer to number three in text box answer. So this is a, what's called a line comment. It's a single line comment. This is called a block level comment. All right. And we can put another single line comment here. This button clicking, this button exits the program. Okay? All right, so we've got a program in here. We've got comments in here for our program. All right, so I showed you some of that. I showed you labels. Labels, basically, you put them in there because you want to use them to hold text, all right? Text that really typically doesn't change once it's been set. Something like enter a number, okay? So you saw something like that. Text boxes are things that can change. They can, you can type in them or you can get put information in them. And I didn't show you this, but when you look, I probably want to set this thing up so that when I click on this text box, you know, right here, I can, I can put a number in there, I can put a number in there, but when I click here, I shouldn't be able to change that answer. So I could have made this a label, but I'm gonna, on the text box there, I'm gonna come down and notice, if you look down here, I've got a property called read only. It says false. I can either double click it to turn it to true, or I can click this down arrow and choose true. Now you'll notice it's gray, which means I'm not gonna be able to change it. Well, that's hard for me to read. So I'm gonna come in there, and I'm gonna change its color. All right, and I'll just make it literally, I don't want to make it white because that might be confusing. <clears throat> so I'll make it like a light red here. But you'll notice that now when I come in and run the program and I put in here 33 and 22 and I click calculate, now I can't change that value. I can still clear it, I can still exit. Again, a lot to throw at you in a short amount of time.
So that's pretty much the same program, and I didn't even realize that the author was doing that, so I did pretty much the same program for you. All right, so we had the two variables and the answer. We attempted to, to uh, convert what was put in there. What, when you put something into a text box, it's put in as a string. It's just characters. So we're attempting here to convert it to a number. We're attempting here to convert it to a number. We're attempting to add those two and then put that number back. All right, when you want to run the program, there's many ways you can run it. To me, the easiest way as we're starting is to just click that green arrow right there. That starts running the program, okay? Right. When you are putting code into a program or you're looking at the form but the program isn't running, you're in what's called design mode. When the program is running, you're in run mode. And if something goes wrong while you're running in the program, while you are running the program, it'll go into debug mode. Those are the three modes. So this is kind of what we did. They put the number down here as a label. Mine, I think, looks a little nicer. You may agree, you may not agree. All right, I even showed you focus. Okay? And focus basically is where the cursor is. So notice if I go back and run this program again, you may or may not have noticed this. So let's go back and run the program again. Mouse isn't any place. So if I click here and I click tab, notice where it went. First of all, I can't put the focus here. I can't put the focus right there. It will not get the focus. But I can set what's called the tab order. How do I do that? Well, I click View. I go down and find a thing about three quarters of the way down that says Tab Order. Then notice all of these have numbers. I'm going to change those. Now That is now 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. These don't really matter. This, the, the red one and these don't really matter. But notice the difference now. I'm going to do another view tab order to make the numbers go away. I'm going to click on this double disk icon, which means save all. And I'm going to run the program by clicking the green arrow. Now notice you can see where my cursor is. And as I start the tab, you can see where it, where it goes. Only the things that can get the focus are being tabbed to but everything is in the order I want it to be in right now. That's good. So I just set that for you. You saw that. I showed you the tab order. They talk about how you can format strings. All right, let's do that. All righty. So this is going to look a little weird, but please bear with me. So I'm going to go back into my calculator routine, and instead of having this just say text box answer equals that, which is okay, all right, I'm going to have it say something like, if I put in 33 and 44, I want it to say 33 plus 44 equals 77, all right? And the way that I do that is I'm going to say this. Now, right now, it's red, and it doesn't know what the heck I'm even trying to do. All right? But those things are what are referred to as placeholders. So what I want to put in here is... Oops, not that. Text box. And I think I may need parentheses around this thing here. All right, so text box. Number, number, number one dot text comma let me put this on a new line because it's going to be too hard to read otherwise text box number two dot text and finally text box answer dot text Right, and that should be a capital B. I think that's what's goofing this up. All right. All right, so it doesn't like something that I'm doing. Let's go back and look here. So 
So there's something goofed up about the way that I'm putting this in there. I'm going to try to run it. I'll probably get an error, but that's okay. All right, that's how we learn, right? So I'm going to click in here and tell it to run. Notice it says there are errors. When you get this and it says, do you want to go on, say no. And it's going to show me these errors. And it says, hey, I expected you to have to end that parenthesis there. I don't know why I would have expected that. Let's see if we do this and this, if it takes, gets rid of the errors. No. Now, I don't think it's complaining because this is all on, on two different lines, but I am going to try to move it onto one line and see if that gets rid of my error. And they're all, no, they're not gone. Not sure what the problem is, but you know what? This is what makes this intriguing. This is what makes it fun. All right? So let's see. Still not sure what the problem is, but I'm gonna I'm just gonna go on in the slides here. They talk about changing the font of a label. I already showed you that. We made it bigger. All right. We talked about changing the names of controls, but I said that should never be a problem because you should always name things before you put any code in them. You can rename things afterwards, and when you do, it'll come back up and it'll say, "Do you want me to refactor?" Which means, if the code is being used anywhere and it's got that name do you want to change it all over and you'll want to change all these all right okay as in console based programs you'll often generate syntax errors that's good because you've already seen them all right errors are so shown in an error list like i said when that comes up say no and you can start going and debugging it in your debug window that's your error list or debug window all right when you're in the form designer, it's easy to double click a control you don't want. If that happens, they tell you how you can go in there and remove it. I'll show you that in a bit. You go in there and you, break, you click this lightning bolt up here and you find that particular, for example, for a button to click routine, you remove this, then it'll be removed. And if you say, I don't know what you mean, I'll show you in a minute. All right. The ultimate authority on C Sharp is the C Sharp library. If you go out to msdn.microsoft.com, MSDN is an acronym which stands for Microsoft Developer Network. That'll answer most of your questions you might have. So the last thing they have in here is how to decide what you want to use. Do you want to use a do you do you want to use a console application or a GUI application? All right. Both types can be used. GUIs are, are snazzier. They take longer to develop. Consoles are simpler, and they may be better when you're first starting off. Forms are more graphical, so they provide a way to, to grab information. All right. And it's really, it's up to you as far as which one you want to use. And that's it for the chapter. What I'm going to do quickly is two things before I finish. First, I'm going to, as I have been doing, I'm going to copy that slide. I'm going to close this thing. I'm going to open up chapter four, which is what we're going to cover next. I'm going to come up here and paste this in. It's called Making Decisions. So this will be chapter four. Making Decisions. Okay. So we have that, and I thinking while I'm going through this, I may have re thought of what the problem is with this program. I don't want to use these in here. I want to use those values. So I want in here num1, comma, and I want in here num2, and in here I want answer. All right, I was thinking that might have solved my problem. It doesn't appear as though it did. See, it's looking for a for this, but I don't understand that. That doesn't make any sense to me. 
and I went back and looked. Let's go back. You know what? Let's make this a teaching moment for all of us. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to type into here msdn.microsoft.com. Forgetting the rest of this and just hit enter. This brings me to the Microsoft Developer Network. There it is. Doesn't look like much, but it's got a wealth of information. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type in C Sharp. Um, I'm going to say placeholder. I don't know if that's what it's called or not, but I'm trying to figure out the answer to this question. Auto glue coats and a string, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Placing dynamity, dynamically generated items. No. Um, C sharp. All right. What does percent zero mean when found in a string? Okay. Well, it pull it pushed us off the stack overflow. And notice this is what I did. And they just got the repeating the zero there. That's no big thing. So why isn't mine working? Could be in the way I'm formatting it. Let's try string dot format. And let's put this whole thing into here. I don't know if that'll do anything. No. Okay, get rid of this. Get rid of this. Wow. Okay. Once I put that string dot format in, it appears to like it. So let's run the program again. 44, 22. And notice now it says 44 plus 22 equals 66. Still clears, still X's. Fantastic. All right, so we are done with Chapter 3, where we took our first adventure into GUI land, so to speak. We're going to come back to Chapter 4, which is not that one. We're going to go back into Chapter 4, which will allow us to make decisions. All right, and I'll be back with that very shortly.